Hi, my name is Milan and I'm half Vietnamese, half Hungarian and I'm currently an architecture student in the UK. I'm starting my master's at the Bartlett School of Architecture this September and in this video I wanted to share my successful master's applications to TU Delft and the Bartlett. Before starting I just want to say that I think there is not a right or wrong way to do things in the creative field so this will be only my unique perspective and I hope um, to provide just some useful information for people who might look to apply, apply to these units in the future too. A bit about my background. I did my bachelor's at the Manchester School of Architecture and I was working as a part one architecture assistant in London last year at HDA, which is a practice focusing on housing. But to be honest, I was not sure if I wanted to go to master's in the first place because I found the way of working in architecture very chaotic and I needed some time to think about how I can achieve a work-life balance but I was lucky enough to work with people in practice who showed me a way of working which I really liked so at the end I decided to apply to three unis uh, TU Delft, Bartlett and LSA London School of Architecture in my opinion they are quite different and I was not sure which route I wanted to go down so that's why I decided to apply to them. TU Delft for me is a bit more engineering focused. The Bartlett is maybe a place where you learn a bit more about the border areas of architecture and then the London School of Architecture is a collaborative practice kind of course where you work during your first year at uni, which I also think is very ben beneficial. This time applying, I think was easier than when I did for bachelors. And also at that time I didn't get into the Bartlett, so it's very nice to see the progress I made. I think it's different in a way that for when you apply for bachelors, at least I didn't know much about architecture, so I was just gathering bits and pieces which I thought might be relevant. But this time it was more about putting to, together my story, how far, far I have come um, in this journey and showing the unis that the reason I want to uh, go there is to continue on this journey. So now let's get into my applications. The first thing I did for each of my applications was to look at the requirements of each university to see what I exactly have to do. I made folders and put the things I already had, like a diploma transcript in, so um, it was easier for me to see what I have left. Um, in terms of Delft, I had to do a portfolio, a motivation letter, and there was an introduction video. They also didn't have interviews, so that was kind of a replacement of that. In terms of the motivation letter, it was an essay of uh, 1,000 to 1,500 words addressing um, specific questions they asked. So I made sections for each of these questions and uh, kind of answered them um, separately, but also made my essay a coherent piece. So I started with an introduction, just um, a general idea about architecture, what does it mean for me and why I want to continue studying it. And then my interest in TU Delft, why I want to go there, my bachelor's experience writing about what I studied in Manchester and elaborating a, a little bit about my uh, humanities essay. And then talking about my final project, which was my third year um, project in Manchester. And then talking about which units I were interested in um, into Delft because they also had studios or units um, each focusing on different things so I think it's very useful to read them carefully and think about what you actually want to do if you get into that uni. I was writing a bit about what kind of project I would like to work on during my master's and to be honest I don't really have an exact thing I want to do but I think you can still write about your interests and kind of package them in a way that they could become a project. Um, so that was my motivation letter. In terms of the portfolio, they also had specific requirements. Um, 
about what the portfolio should reflect and what should it include. So it's very important to follow this carefully. My first project I showed was, was my technologist design project in my third year. And the reason I showed it in the first place, because um, in their requirements, they said that they are looking for candidates who have a strong design, but also technological skills. So um, since I haven't really done that many later stage projects or technological designs, I thought this would be a good way to show what I know even if it's not a lot. So I showed my technologist project and we did some testing about the performance of the building um, using uh, the Sapphire software. And we had to kind of make changes in the building according to these testings uh, to make it more energy efficient. And then coming up with the final uh, envelope study of the building. The second project I showed was my final project in uni, which was an interchange for socially responsible seamless future mobilities. I was in the unit uh, focusing on infrastructure architecture in infraspace um, in Manchester. We were looking at the future transport system and reimagining the service stations, uh, what they can be in the future since they're um, going out of date at the moment with all the new technologies rolling out. So my project was more a spatial exploration of what the future might be in terms of these structures. Um, so I showed a little bit of analysis uh, diagrams, some illustrations I did showing how the transport system is now and where it's heading. My whole project kind of revolved around the idea of what it would mean spatially if this would actually happen, if the transport system would become integrated and um, seamless. And then more diagrams and sketches about how this infrastructure would look like, because if the transport system is integrated, it would require many things to um, to run efficiently um, and then bringing all these ideas into a more spatial form think about how what, how it could manifest and how all these different vehicles could integrate in the service stations uh, program circulation and services diagrams showing a one to five detail of one of the um, accommodation modules in the project so that's zooming in a bit also showing more technical knowledge. And then a final ground floor plan of this mega structure, which through my research, the service stations become, and a side section through the motorway. So that was a whole year project. And I kind of tried to put in different things to show the different skills I had, like drawing, um, 2D drawings, 3D drawings, diagrams, but obviously you cannot show the whole project, so you have to think about a way to presenting it um, in a few pages, but making it clear. To be honest, I think this could have been done better. I don't think these pages necessarily were the best choices. Um, I think my Bartlett application was a bit more successful in this, but I think I still showed um, some works I'm proud of. Uh, and then I showed a, a second year project because I felt like this also showed um, some additional skills, which maybe I didn't show in that project, for example, model making. Uh, so this project about, was about how could we create inspiring places to live in the city. So that was my design question I was trying to explore. And in this project, I explored through a lot of physical models, thinking about how the housing cluster would function and look like and how I could create a place where people could mingle and really get inspired. And the final design had three different uh, housing modules 
um, developed. Um, and these are drawings showing that and also in axonometric. And I showed a group project um, which we did in a summer workshop where I went to in Florence, Italy. And it was a, a very interesting project because we explored the use and there was a ghost town, a medieval town, um, ruins basically, where we went to and then we had to create um, a project which would bring, bring life back to this uh, ghost town called Castel Vecchio. And our project was revolving around the, the places between the ruins, so we create, at the end we created social, these public platforms between the ruins and very simple buildings inside the ruins, um, according to a historic map we found. And this was uh, our final plan, which I made in CAD, showing these public platforms, creating a new relationship between the ruins, but also having reference to the historic town. The last project I showed was the project I worked on in practice, the longest and it was um, a project close to London in Ilford, um, a housing development of around 1,200 units. First I showed some facade studies I was working on and then I was taking ownership of the townhouses in the project which was a really sm small part of the project but through that I was able to do the same things as the architects did, working in Revit, producing the same drawings, just on a smaller scale. And some illustrations I also made um, in practice. Finally, I also had to write a motivation letter somewhere here, so I just pulled out some things from my motivation letter and put it here, and also showed some extracurricular works, which I thought uh, could be interesting, some photographs I took, graphic design, which I was very involved with during my bachelor's, and some other models I made. So that was my Delft portfolio. On to the Bartlett. So for the Bartlett I had to do a personal statement, which was very similar to the bachelor's one. Um, so it was a one-page document, which was much shorter compared to the motivation letter I had to write for Delft. So in my personal statement, I started off with a quite general sentence, um, kind of summarizing my thoughts about, on architecture as a broad field, so I will read it out loud. Uh, Since starting university, my understanding of the built environment has evolved immensely. For me, architecture is best described as constantly evolving interrelations between time, place and people. It is impossible to separate spaces from culture, individual emotions and identity. Therefore, I'm interested to approach design as storytelling, an although biased but collaborative curation of narratives told by many. So that was kind of my catch, catchy introduction, but it, it also shows what I think about architecture. It's quite broad and quite vague, but I do think that and I do like to approach architecture storytelling, um, especially after thinking about it a lot, that's always the thing I, I come back to, I guess. And then I just went on talking a little bit about my um, final project in Manchester and what I learned and also um, mentioning the award I received in my university. And then I went on to talk about extracurricular activities I did during my bachelor's because for me that was a very important part. I was a core committee of the Student Society of Architecture and I think that added a lot to, to my education. I also attended some summer workshops, uh, model making workshops uh, and the workshop I mentioned about reuse and I also entered the One Drawing Challenge where I became a finalist. Moving forward, I put why I think the Bartlett would be a good next step in this journey, and then uh, talking about what kind of things I would like to do there, 
and also kind of reflecting on what I did during my bachelor's and maybe what I want to do differently. And then just um, a, a closing section talking about um, maybe my broader aims. So not only develop as a designer, but also a person. So that was my personal statement. In terms of the portfolio, they ask you to upload it on issue. You can upload it in a way that people can only view it if they have a link, but a lot of people um, upload it publicly. So you can look at examples and that's what I also did. In my portfolio, I showed the same projects um, as I did in my TUDAV portfolio, but I also added uh, one more section about my model making and illustrations, which I thought I didn't put enough into my Daft application. Uh, so I started off with my final year project this time because this was the project I wanted to talk about the most. So I wrote a description showing um, initial exploration and then the programs uh, and structural uh, development showing some 3D um, visuals, also hand-drawn diagrams and digital uh, diagrams, uh, showing the same um, detail. And then I showed a different plan this time, it was an upper floor plan, because I thought maybe the, the ground floor plan is a bit too confusing, and showing the section. Uh, so. As you can see, I showed less, but I think it was more co coherent talking about my project, showing what was the aim, how, what I did, what kind of explorations I did, and where I got, got to at the end. And then I, I showed only two pages of my technologies design project to show a detail. And then I put in my second year housing project and then the Casta Vecchio project and the chapel place. Unfortunately, at that time, I didn't have more technical works from uh, practice, but I did manage to work on stage four at the end of my year out. Um, and they did ask me about this on the interview. And I said that I'm aware of this and I will ask to be able to work on that and um, I managed so I think that was great. Although I think my interview didn't go that well because it was very short and I just feel like I was not confident enough maybe. A page on model making to show that I took the extra step to attend extracurricular events and workshops. I also really like making, so that was good. Uh, and then illustrations and graphic design, which I did in Manchester as a committee member because I was charge of the publicity. And also I was part of the Wellbeing um, initiative and we did booklets um, for first years on student Wellbeing, which was a very fulfilling experience. And then this was my drawing for the one drawing challenge where I became a finalist. So I put it here. That was my Bartlett portfolio and it was shorter because they also asked for a specific number of pages. So I didn't want to put more. And I think um, it's generally not a good idea to submit a longer portfolio than they ask for um, because I think they also want to see the skill that you can curate your own work and show the best pieces um, and it's easier for them to look through the application too. So that was um, a quick run through of my two Daft and Bartlett portfolios and I hope uh, it maybe had some useful information for you. I think there are also other very good videos on YouTube for example, if you are applying for bachelors, I think it might be useful to check out other videos because it might be a bit different. So I, I know one video which I really like and also about the personal statement, there are also a lot of content which talks about that and which must, 
is much better than mine so I will link an example there too. And finally just a summary of my thoughts on the applications and some general tips um, of what I think are the most useful things to do. So firstly I think the most important thing is to follow the guidelines which they have. They don't really have much but they usually have general things about the page number and what you should include and I think even though it's good to break rules sometimes, I think um, in this case you should really follow these and then um, innovate in all the other areas. And don't submit a very long portfolio, um, even for job applications too. Second one is to make it your own. At the end of the day, all the portfolios will be so different and will be unique to you. So just think about yourself as a designer, what what is unique about yourself and just try to tell the story through your your work. And also I think it's useful to make your whole application coherent. So if you are also submitting a CV, um, making sure that the CV, the portfolio and the your essay or your personal statement kind of reflects the same style, reflects your personality. The third one is kind of following on from that is to show your strengths. And I think this is very useful. So I think this is one thing which I learned during my bachelor's is that you will probably not be good at all the things in architecture because it's such a broad field. So find out what you're interested in and what are your strengths and really show them and be proud of that. But at the same time, the first is to also show your skills, um, include different things you did uh, to show your to show the different skills you have. And then the last one is to make it easy to understand. As I said before, I find it very useful to think about it as a story. Um, and also thinking about it in a way that how can my portfolio tell the story without me being there. So make sure that it flows and it kind of speaks for itself, so it's not confusing, but it's clear for the reader. And then the final tip is to talk to your peers and ask for feedback. I think that's probably the most useful thing you can do to talk to other people who already applied or are going to apply, and it will make it, the process also more enjoyable because you will realize that a lot of people are in the same boat. So that was a quick run through and I hope it provided some useful information. Good luck for everyone who um, is going to apply to uni or is applying to jobs. Um, yeah, thank you, bye.